Hello, my name is PJ Jerome. Before I start, I just want to give Jesus Christ a glory for giving me the strength and the willing heart to get on this phone and share my testimony and let you know what Jesus Christ done in my life. He's took the pain out of my life. He's, given, he's took all the hate. He's took all the bitterness, all the bad things what's gone on as a child. He's took it all away and filled it full of happiness and filled it full of joy and filled it full of peace and love what I've got from other people. And I'm going to let you know what all happened for me. I never got brought up going to church. Never knew Jesus Christ died on the cross, but always used to ask God for help growing up as a child. Three sisters, heroin addicts, brother, a heroin addict. I used to sniff cocaine pie and thinking I was a gangster flying around the place, thinking I knew everything. That was the world I used to live in. I used to represent the devil. I never knew anything different. It was in full control of my heart, my mind and my soul. It was in full control of me. What happened to me, how it all happened for me, glory to Jesus. Ten years ago, a man knocked on my door. He was a drinking partner of mine. Knocked on the door, him and another lad called Jimmy. He says, PJ, he said, I've turned a born again Christian. I looked at him, I couldn't stop laughing at him. I went, you've lost the plot. But a week before he come to me, I was from dying off cocaine in bed and I'm asking God to help me. So looking back now, I was a bit of a hypocrite. But he come and planted that seed. About a year or two after when he left the house, I got 17 years for a £3.1 billion drug conspiracy. And I got 17 years in court for it. Then I was in prison. Then about a couple of years after that, I was in prison serving that sentence. Probably about five years into the sentence, my proceeds of crime was dragging on. And they were trying to give me another five years on top of the 17 years for my proceeds of crime. And I goes to the court one day for my pocket. And they're trying to give me another five on top of the 17 years. And I'm asking God to help me in this cell. Please God, I'm begging you, God, help me. I'm asking God to help me. I've never gone to a Christian service, but I'm asking God to help me. I walked up to court, didn't get the extra five years. And on the back of the sweat, I'm going back to the prison. I'm going, thank you, God, I didn't get that prison. That would have killed me. Went back to the prison, fell asleep that night, got up the next morning. There's a telephone at the side of me on the wing. I'm looking at the phone like that. I've started to get emotional. Tears are coming in my eyes. I thought, imagine getting on that phone this morning and ringing my daughter, Paris, and ringing my mum saying, you never know what happened yesterday. I've got five years on top of me, 17 years. It would have killed me. And I went, thank God I didn't get that jail. Then God put a thought in my mind. He went, PG, I want you to go up to that church this Sunday. So all of a sudden, I'm six years in the jail, and God put it in my mind to go to that church on the Sunday. So I walked up that Sunday, went to the Sunday service and sat on the back like that and there's people praying for people at the front and I thought, do you know what it is? I'm going to go and get prayed for here. And I walked to the front, shook my two arms like that and just put a hand on top of my shoulder. She went full PJ full of the Holy Spirit. I knew now about Holy Spirit, I knew now about praying, I knew now about now. So when I had my eyes shut, i never forget it, it was like my two feet was rocking back and forwards. But I started to go every week then and as I started to go every week I started to get this peace what I can't explain, just peace, what I've never had before. It all went out of my life, all the anger, but the peace has come in. And when it come in, my head fell off. I wanted to know more about Jesus. So I'm going to the service every Sunday. I'm evangelising around the prison. I'm going everywhere. Everybody's coming to the prison. I'm telling everybody about the Lord. I'm giving Jesus a glory everywhere. This fire's come inside, what I've never had before, but it's just come inside me. I've never experienced it. My eyes used to be like tarmac. All of a sudden, my eyes, my eyes are glowing, so I'm around evangelising. A few months into the sentence in the jail, when I accepted Jesus, I got baptised. And when I got baptised in the prison, I can't remember roughly how long it was, God spoke to me. He says, PJ, I want you to ring... Paddy up who come to your house. I never spoke to that man in 10 years. God put it in my mind to ring that man. I got on the telephone, got his number, rung him up. And then when I rung him up, he come to see me afterwards in the prison. He says, when you rung me that day, PG, I was on my hands and knees praying to Jesus. Saying, Jesus, why have I dedicated my life to you, Lord? Why am I going through these trials? As he was saying that prayer, I rung him from the prison because I got his telephone number. I went, Paddy's issue, Paddy. It's me, PG. Thank you, Paddy, for coming to my house and planting that seed all those years ago. I understand why you've accepted Jesus into your life. It's all the pain he takes out of your life and all the happiness. I encourage any single person, if you whatever you're going through in your life, accept Jesus into your life. Mm -hmm. Accept Jesus into your life. The world mm -hmm. doesn't do it. The devil wants you on the roundabout. Accept Jesus into your life. He died on the cross for you. There's an eternal life waiting up there for you. Get yourself wrapped up in a local church. Repent and accept him into your life. Mm -hmm. He'll take all that pain away. My heart was so hard. And when he accepted Jesus, he took all the pain away. And that's why I go around telling people about the Lord. And every person I come in contact with, I'm, I help help them. I've got a heart to help people out. My ex-missus' partner comes up and says to me, 
I will FaceTime him at the wedding. My dad come back with a stick with a nail in at the end and give me one that bad of an eye and the put us in care of I'm living with the man now. We've got nothing but love, but that's what God does. He takes all that things, what goes on in your life, what all gets put down into a bin. The Lord takes it all out. He takes it all out. He repairs you inside. He loves you. He's God's only son who died on that cross for the sins of the world. And he's waiting for you to act you into his life as his Lord and Saviour. If you say this repair after me, it'll be the best decision you'll ever do in your life. I've decided to accept Jesus Christ into my life as my Lord and Saviour. I want to accept you, Jesus. You died on that cross for my sins. I want to accept you into my life as my Lord and Saviour, Lord. And I want to ask for forgiveness, Jesus, for all the things I've done wrong against you, Lord. And I commit my life fully to you, Lord. And I accept you into my life as my Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen.